The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right. Good evening, everybody. How are we doing tonight? If I can get an audio and video check, let me know that I'm coming through. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, everybody. Yes, and this will be recorded. All right. Good, good. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining me tonight. My name is John Skelton. I'm head of operations with Apex Investing here. Welcome to the webinar of Be the Sniper or Be the Target. Many of you are um, brand new here with us. As you know, we're running a big uh, Apex open house and free for 30 days. So a lot of you are new with us and just starting off the last few days. So I wanted to uh, welcome you. And thank you for joining us. This webinar will be, uh, we're going to have some tidbits here from, for some of our current and veteran traders. But tonight is uh, mainly going to be focused to help you guys that are new and in open house. And we're going to kind of go back to the basics a little bit here. And I, I want to help you understand the chart. Okay. Yeah, great. Great. Getting a few people to say, hey, I'm new, three days, newbie here. Um, I'm sure you guys have all been through some of the training here. I'm going to just briefly show you where that is, but we're going to dive in. We're going to do this webinar tonight, and then we're going to do another one Thursday night. Tonight, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of break down the chart, okay? Just very basic, um, explain to you what are some of the things on the chart. What, what do they mean? Why are they there? Um, and then Thursday night, we're going to do the same thing again, but focused on order prints. What I'm going to cover with you tonight is not going to be anything about order prints. It's going to be all the other indicators on the chart. And then Thursday will be about order prints. That way we break it up a little bit. Don't overwhelm you and um, just help you, especially for those of you that have just been with us, you know, several years saying, oh, one day, two day, three days. We're just going to kind of go through the chart here. Sound good? So a little bit different webinar tonight. We're going to walk through some of the basics and fundamentals. Let's get rolling here. And as always, got to pop up the disclosures. Trading involves risk. Make sure you know what you're doing before you do it. Um, so as you know, we've got free boot camp now through, you know, December 4th. For anyone that signs up, 30 days free, no card. We let you come in and check it all out. OK, we don't want you paying us, you know, during this time. We want you to jump in and dive in and be in the room, be profitable. Get this thing down. Check it out for yourself. OK, so we want to welcome you. I hope you're enjoying it. Um, real quick, I just want to make sure because we've had some questions. So for those of you that are new, when you log into the Apex website, okay, um, you'll go here to the home page. All right. And by the way, guys, we've got a lot to cover tonight. Okay. Um, so if you ask a question, I don't answer it. I'm not avoiding you. I just, I want to get through the material that we're covering tonight. And a lot of your questions will be answered in kind of the next section. Just just stick with me here. I know you've got a lot of questions. We, you know, this webinar could easily turn into an all nighter, but I want to try to get through what it is I want to show you here. And I'll try to have some time at the end for some uh, Q&A. OK, so it's not that I'm avoiding you. I just know that it's late and I want to get this information out. Then we'll deal with some questions. OK, so keep that in mind, not avoiding you. If I don't answer you, I just want to stay on schedule here. We'll pop that at the end. So if you're on the Apex website here, all you want to do is just focus right here. You log in, you just go right here to Sniper Bootcamp. Like your whole world is right here. This is where you're going to live for the next 30 days. And by the way, uh, as most of you may know, um, oh, I got to log back in. Most of you may know we, um, there was an issue earlier today with Amazon servers and our site was down for a good part of the afternoon, so I apologize for that. But everything is back up and going now. We've got it all fixed with Amazon. They changed some, some back-end keys that was messing us up. So I'm sorry for that, but we're all back and running now. You can hop back on. And right here is everything you need. When you're brand new, this is where you're going to go. The first step, you can sign up for some upcoming webinars, including the one Thursday. This is very important. We've seen that many of you have skipped this because you're like, hey, I signed up. I just want to get in that trade room. Show me what this is all about. Get in the trade room. And I understand that, right? You're new. What is this Apex thing? Is this legit? Is this real? Is this a waste of my time? You just want to get in that room and see what's up. I, I get it. Okay. But this video right here, it's literally about 20 minutes, but it's super important. And it's titled Six Figures to 12 Months. It very, it's 
only a part of the videos about this. This video walks you through the plan, walks you through the training, what you need to know, how to operate the site, where to get help. Very important. Make sure you watch that. Okay. And right here is where you access the elite trade room. Couple things here. Make sure to go through and read this. Make sure that you understand how to install Hotcom. Hotcom is the company that runs our room, right? If you're brand new, you go through and click right here. It'll download, you hit okay. And then every time you go in here and click this, okay? You wanna make sure that when you get to this page right here, okay, a lot of people are having some problems with this. Um, let's just give it a second to load here. What you're looking for is this red button. If you don't see this red button when you get to this page, it's because you need to clear your cache and cookies and restart your browser and come back in, okay? And then when you click this here, okay, um, then you're gonna go right here and hit connect. And then right down here, you're gonna see this pop up. See this thing, this is H curl. And then that's what you need to click to get into the room. If you're having any trouble, and when you get to this page, you never see this right here. If you're using Google Chrome, try using Firefox or Edge, okay? If you're having a problem with that, um, download popping up right there for you, okay? A uh, few people have had that issue. I'm gonna work tomorrow with Hotcom, make sure they've got everything solved on their end. We might go ahead and get you a, um, you know, just a simpler link to get right in the room, okay? But that's really it. You just gotta click on those few things. A lot of people have sat here on this page going, it's not going anywhere. You gotta click this down here. And if you don't see that pop up, use Edge or Firefox, okay? But that is the room there, okay? Um, and then from here, very simple, setting up Ninja Trader. This is where you get your templates, get your charts, okay? Uh, make sure to go through this. You really wanna get your own chart set up. And if you have any trouble at all, you can go right here. There's a Skype help room that can help you through and walk you, walk you through that, okay? So if you're having any trouble at all, you know, we're here to help, but we're not here to just handhold and do it all for you. You need to understand how to how the platform works and how to use the charts, okay? But if you need help, just click. Everything is here in the videos. If you follow the video step by step, you shouldn't have any problems. If you have, you know, something weird, just click right here in the Skype group. There's tons of people in there helping out and you can get answers really quick, okay? And get set up and go, all right? And then down here, you can get into, um, you know, learning the systems and everything. And make sure when you go through these, had a few people that are like, oh, okay, I clicked here, like install the toolkit, update the tool. Oh, I didn't realize to watch both videos. For some reason, some people are only watching the videos on the left and not the ones on the right. <laughs> okay, so make sure to watch all the videos. And it's, they're really not that long, okay? I mean, it's, it's really less than an hour. You can be all set up, have your charts, have Ninja, have everything, okay? So make sure to go there and check out the, uh, the training um and get in the room okay if you have any trouble getting in the room follow those steps there and then we're going to get some other links out tomorrow to those of you that are having trouble like i said if that one thing doesn't pop up just instead of chrome try edge or firefox okay and, and one of the reasons we let you come straight in most companies like oh you got to watch this and you got to buy this and you got to know this before they even let you in your room the reason we let you in the trade room so quick is so that you can see what it's all about is you can see there's other traders in there and see these trades being called out, see people with profitable trades so that it will motivate you to say, okay, hey, this is worth my time. I wanna dig in and spend an hour and set up my own charts and all that. I wanna spend a little time and watch the step-by-step -step videos and learn these trades, okay? And so that's why we let you in is so that you see it, it'll motivate you to go through the quick setup and so on, okay? So I showed you there where to go where to check out the training. Um, and again, if you need help, hop in that Skype room, okay? And be in the trade room each and every morning. So tonight we're gonna go down and break down the charts a little bit, help you understand them. Like I said, Thursday night, we're gonna cover order prints and OP levels. So tonight's webinar is gonna be very basic, really more focused more for you new members of Open House, but I do have a couple of goodies for everyone. Let's knock that part out first. Um, I know that some of you, um, veteran traders, how many people were on the webinar with me, say two weeks ago, 
And this is a little more advanced. Those of you in open house, don't worry about this right now. Who was on the webinar when I talked about 50-50 continuum charts? Yeah? And there was something I promised you, right? Okay. So, here we go. Um, what you need to do is update your toolkit, okay? Update your toolkit. Um, and what you'll do right here is right-click indicators. Do any of y'all have this yet? Have any of you added it on already? Right here at the top, Apex Bar Chop, okay? Apex Bar Chop. And important is right over here, alert threshold. Okay, remember I said this is based on, you know, bar up, a bar down, a bar up, a bar down. Bar how many bars do you want there to be up down up down before you get an alert okay um do you want eight do you want you know how many do you want okay i'd probably set it on like four just so it's like okay i can start watching you know four or five you can click here whether you want audio alert or visual alert or flash alert you set up your alerts right there okay and then you just hit okay and you will now have that um alert that i talked to you about having um a couple weeks ago good you guys have been using this 50 50 chart a lot does it help does it help you out kind of the way i showed you to use it just a nice extra little thing to glance at gives you a little bit different view of the market right okay good so the alert is there update your toolkit and you should be good to go okay one other new release that I want to show you guys just real quick here. And I know Daryl mentioned it to you in the Elite Room. Uh, this is just a very, it's a plain chart right here. But if you go to indicators, um, there's another one, another new indicator called right here, trend bias filter, okay? And you can add that on to your existing chart, whatever chart you want. And just hit OK. Now, this kind of looks like the DR, the way it plots, but it is not the DR. Okay, and we do not use it like the DR. This does not take the place of DR. This is just an extra indicator, and just by the name, it's called you know, trend bias filter. This is more for, you know, we talk about, hey, don't be biased about what the market's gonna do. I think it's going down. I think it's going down. Hey, it keeps going up and up, and I don't think it can go up anymore. It's gonna go down. This is just kind of an extra thing to help you look at for some extra confidence to put yourself in check, okay? It's very, very simple. When it's red, what do you think the bias is telling you? That the market's in a downtrend, right? When it's green, the bias is the market's in an uptrend, right? I mean, when it's red, when it's yellow, that means chop, range, or in the middle of a trend flip, okay? It's an indicator. Can indicators be lagging? Yes, okay? Yes, they can be a little lagging, but it's there more for a confirmation, okay? It's there more for a put your bias in check. Or, you know, for those of you that are new that are like, you know, hey, I, I understand that when the market's in an uptrend, I only want to take trades up. But I'm still new and learning. How do I know when it's in a trend, okay? How can I be a little more confident that, it's trending, or I think you would consider this ranging, but I don't know yet. So for those of you that are veteran traders, if you wanna use this, this is just something extra to add on, okay? Just to kind of get another bird's eye view of the market. For those of you that are new, maybe you like this because it's like, hey, I'm, I'm still trying to get a handle on, you know, okay, like the market's in here, it's going up, so is it an uptrend? Wait, it's going down. Okay, it went down a little more, but wait, is that ranging? What is that? Well, I'm still new. I'm not sure. So maybe I'll, yeah, I'll just sit it out for a little bit if it's yellow until I, you know, learn a little bit more. You know, maybe I'll wait for it to be like 
okay, it's green, I'm gonna look for long trades. Okay, it's red. So it's just there to help. It's just there to be, you know, something to put your bias in check or give you one other thing to be aware of. Of, I think the market's trending up. Yep, that's green, my DR is green. Okay, cool, okay. The yellow is for, the, so green is uptrend. Red is downtrend. Yellow is neither, meaning it's not confirming that it's an uptrend or downtrend. It's neither, meaning maybe it's transitioning from an uptrend to a downtrend, or maybe it's just ranging or it's chopping, you know, and it can just be another thing to help you out of. I think the market's ranging right now, and that thing's yellow too. I'm going to stick with my range trading rules, okay, and look for scalps. Make sense? Okay. Um, Sean, you said, what's setting to show the current price? This right here, that should already be on your chart. Current price should already be on your sniper chart. Okay. Oh, the dash line. Um... I believe that's already set on your chart, but you can just go right here to current price. Okay, so what you what you do is you right click, go to indicators. Okay, and you find that indicator, which is called Apex Current Price. And right here, you can click this, the current line stroke. You can make it dash three. You could change the colors around right there. Cool? Okay. All right, so. There's two new indicators for you on the newest release. You've got your, your chop alert for the continuum bars, and now you've got um, bar trend, or, well, my mind just went blank. What do we call it? Trend bias filter. So can you see how that might be helpful? Especially some of you guys that are new in open house and you're still kind of learning, like, when do I confirm it's an uptrend or downtrend or, Kind of helps your bias there, gives you a little direction, right? Even as a newbie, even someone that's oh, you know, been around for a while, there's another indicator for you to use. Cool. Okay. Yes, if you want to use those, what you need to do is update your toolkit. Okay, because it just got released. How do you update your toolkit? Well, I'm glad you asked because. If you go back to where we were, okay, and in the training course right here under step number three, you go right here where it talks about um, the toolkit. This shows you how to install the toolkit. This video, 36 seconds, shows you how to update the toolkit right there, okay? All right. Okay, so that is that. There's your new releases, guys. I know y'all been waiting on it, and especially that chop one. So, okay, so let's get down to nitty gritty here. Let's talk about understanding some charts, okay? So, we're gonna first of all talk about the bars, all right? And we're gonna talk about diagnostic bars, okay? Some of you are saying, hey, you know, what are these bars that you guys are using over there at Apex? You know, what are these bars? So let's start with that. And let's talk about diagnostic bars. So your sniper trading charts, Daryl, she teaches you how to open those charts and tells you to use a 10 tick diagnostic chart, right? So what is a diagnostic bar? Okay, well, this is a plain chart, nothing on it really, just the bars. So what this is, so let's focus right here. You see this up close bar, okay? Somebody asked earlier, hey, how come y'all don't color your bars where the up close bars are green and the down close bars are red? Well, for one, we've already got so many things of color on the charts, okay? It, it makes it very overwhelming when we also do that to these bars. So that's one of the reasons we didn't do that, okay? 
another reason is, you know, red and green is, you know, looks like profit loss. You know, there's too many reds and greens already on there. So these are tick bars, okay? Jeremy says they're Renko bar. They're similar to Renko bars, but they're a little bit different, okay? Uh, for one, they're a little bit more accurate because their accuracy to the tick, but they plot slightly different. And so I just wanna make sure everybody understands how they work. So this is a 10 tick chart, which, which means the body of this bar, meaning from right here to right here is 10 ticks. Okay, the body of this bar from the bottom to the top is 10 ticks. So what that means is when this bar right here closes up, it closes right there. This new bar starts right there, okay? And if it goes up five more ticks, it will make and complete this up close bar. And then the new bar starts right here. These bottom five ticks are auto filled in, okay? So even though it shows the open down here, it's really starting right here. So a 10 tick bar really has to only go up five more ticks to close, okay? But let's say this bar comes down to right here at the false open as it were, and then it goes down 10 ticks, then it'll make a down close bar because it's a 10 tick diagnostic bar. Okay, so does that make sense? When this bar completes and stops here, this bar immediately starts right here, even though it auto fills this bottom five ticks in, it's only gotta go up five ticks to complete this overall 10 tick bar. It's gotta come down here to the bottom and then go down 10 ticks to be a down close bar. Does that make sense, how these bars work? And if you've watched the videos, you've played with it, you might understand this already, okay? But do you understand how these bars work? So let's say that we were using a 30 tick bar, then that would mean when this bar completed, it'd have to go up 15 ticks to complete the bar, okay? Well, with the wicks, for example, right here, See this, see this bar closed up, okay? That means this next bar started right here, but it pulled back down five ticks to right here, and then it pulled back down another several ticks, then it came back up. So it made a wick, it wicked outside of the body of the 10 tick, but it didn't go down another 10 ticks this way to make a down close bar. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's how this bar works. Now, these right here, this is called the bar range indicator. Do you see this red line here with the price and this green line here with the price? What this is saying is, so the wick shows a true high, low, yes, Daniel, mm -hmm. correct, correct. It shows, the wick would show the true low of this bar. It just didn't go low enough to close as a down close bar, okay? So like right here, do you see this live where we are? So this bar closed down and then the market went right here, right? And it came down and now it's popping up, okay? So you see that? So what this is saying is, if the market comes all the way up here to this green line, it will be an up close bar, right? It's also saying if it comes all the way down here to this red line, it will be a down close bar, meaning the bar will complete at one of these places. That's what's called the bar range. That way you know you know when it reaches here or here, it will close as an up bar or, or a down bar. Why do you think that might be important with the trading system we have? Any ideas why it might be important to know exactly where that bar will be? Well, because we only enter, like on the sniper trades, at on a reversal bar, once it closes. 
So it's helpful to know ahead of time where that will be so we can have the order ready there, okay? Does that make sense? Why that's important for you to know that, okay? So that's how the bars work, and that's why the bar range is there so that you know where that bar is gonna close. Now, some of you are gonna say, okay, that makes perfect sense. I understand, you know, why that's there, but what about those other charts? Um, let me see something here. Give me just a second. So you know how on your other sniper charts, you have multiples of those, right? Right here, you're like, okay, so if it gets to that green, it'll be an up close bar. If it gets to the red, it'll be a down close bar. But why is there two more of them down here? Right? Well, what those are for is basically what this is telling you is if this bar closes up, if the, this bar gets here, it'll close up. Then if it gets there, another bar will close up, right? Then if it gets there, another bar will close up. It's letting you know the next couple levels of what it would take to get an up closed bar or down closed bar. But also with the sniper scalping system, if this bar closes up and let's say that was an entry, this is showing us where our take profit would be and where we'd be getting out, right? Okay. Does that make sense as to why they're there? Okay. Also, let me give you an example. Let's say that, and this is not a trade setup, but let's say it was a trade setup. It's like, okay, if this bar closes up, I want to enter here. And I see that my take profit is going to be right there. But between my entry and my take profit, which I can clearly see where it would be, I have a big old stack of all kind of levels and support, all kind of crap between where I would enter and between where I'd want to take my profit. Does that give you a pretty quick visual of, is anything in my way? Here to here, is anything in my way? Well, there's a big stack above it. Okay, I'm good. I've got room from my entry to my profit, no problem. But ooh, all that crap's between me. I've got a brick wall between me and where I want to go. So maybe I stay out. Steve says, nice. Does that make sense, Steve, while that's there? Okay. Does that make a little more sense to you guys? I know some of you are like, what is, what the hell is all this crap on these charts, right? <laughs> and what is it for? Why is it there? What's the point? So does that make a little more sense? Why there's, you understand why the first one's there? So you can say, okay, that uh, bar will close up, that bar will close down, cool. But now you see why the other ones are there, especially that that second one. Because it's like, ooh, let me get ready to place my order. Crap, do I want to? Because there's a lot of stuff between me and where I'm going. I'm the sniper. Right here, I'm going to pull the trigger. That's my target. But there's a lot of stuff between me and my target. Is it a good time or a bad time? to take my shot, right? Okay, perfect. Starting to see it more clearly, okay? So, you know, if, the, if it's a proper setup and this is where you'd enter and there's nothing in your way between here your entry and here your take profit, then that's great. For those of you that have watched any of the training videos where Daryl talks about, hey, obstructions. We don't enter a trade if there's a wall in the way, or if there's a stack of two levels in the way, or if there's subtle, you know what I mean, deviation levels. We don't want to trade into, because look, we're only going for this little bit here, right? So let's make sure there's nothing in the way of our little bit. Let's make it a clean shot, okay? Is that helpful? Just breaking that little part down right there of what are these bars, how do they work, and what is this bar range there for? Notice I got rid of everything else off these charts, and I want to show you each piece 
by itself alone so that you get it and then we'll build on it. Cool. Any questions directly about diagnostic bars or bar range? Okay. This is more for the sniper trades on futures, not so much for Nadex, Michael. Okay. But if you're trading Nadex on them, then fine. You need to know where the entry is because we don't enter until the bar range closes. That middle one just shows you where the next bar will close. Okay. No, toolkit access is up and going. All right. So that is diagnostic bars and bar range. Okay. Now let's talk a little bit about um, levels. All right. Because levels is, is, is a big thing here. And the market really respects levels. Levels are important. They can, you know, be support and resistance, supply and demand, areas of greed, fear, perceived value. Sometimes they have true value due to orders and, and volume and levels. Sometimes they have, you know, perceived emotional value. Okay. But a lot of traders don't look at levels properly. So I want to first talk to you about deviation levels. Okay. These are on your sniper chart. And they look like this, okay? Have you seen these on your chart? Where one right here will say settlement, and then one will say plus 0.25, plus 0.5, plus 0.7, plus one, and go on up. Below settlement will say negative 0.25, negative 0.5, and so on, okay? Well, those on your chart are called deviation levels, all right? And that's what the deviation levels look like. They start from settlement and go up in quarters, basically. They go down in quarters, basically, okay? So those are deviation levels, all right? And the actual deviation level is marked with a blue line. You notice there's a little shade around it to say, hey, that's the actual deviation level, but this is kind of the deviation zone, okay? just to be aware of the zone. So what are deviation levels? Okay, it's, it's the expected movement of the market. These are not based on historicals. Some of you might have heard of, you know, um, you know, historical deviations, historical deviation moves of the market. These are not based on historical moves of the market. These are forward looking. These look into the future. They're derived from that day's pricing, the IV of option pricing. Okay. It's kind of the market, you know, putting their money where their mouth is. I, IV means implied volatility. Okay. And your implied means expected. Volatility means move. Okay, so it's the expected move of the market. All right, it's it's the the big guy, big boys putting their money where their mouth is, meaning it looks at the price of options at certain levels that would show expected forward-looking moves of the market. No, they're not moving averages or fib levels. It it's not based on that. It's based on the actual pricing of the market of the options in that market. Okay, so it's forward looking. Does that make sense? Okay, and that's what deviation levels are. They're looking at the pricing of options, okay, for that day. All right, which can help give expected moves of the market. Okay, so they're on there, so you just might have to kind of squeeze your chart down and you'll see them, okay? But they are on your chart. Um, the next level I wanna talk to you about that's on your chart, it's called ice levels, okay? Uh, Michael says, how do they differ from support and resistance? Okay, the deviation levels are, are very different from support and resistance because support and resistance, Michael, looks backwards, right? It looks backwards at 
where was the last level of support? Where was the last level of resistance? Where did the market stop? Where were all the orders? Where was the consolidation and accumulation in the past? Okay, that's what creates past. Support and resistance is looking to the left of the chart, looking back, right? Make sense? The deviation levels are looking forward to the right side of the chart because it's based on the deviation levels come out at 8 p.m. for the next day, okay? Because it's looking at, okay, what is the pricing of options right now for tomorrow? Okay, there's a big expected move for tomorrow. So it's, it's the forward-looking expectation, not the, the back-looking levels of support. We're going to talk about the back, the levels of support here in just a minute, though, okay? So this next indicator that's on your chart is what we call our ice volume zones, okay? And you'll see those designated with a green line at the top, red line at the bottom, and blue line in the middle, okay? What ice is, is it basically tells you where 80% of the volume was yesterday, okay? What it does is it looks at the previous day and tells you, okay, from the top green, the bottom red, th this area is where 80%, the, this price box is where 80% of yesterday's volume happened. This was an important price box yesterday. 80% of the volume yesterday happened in this box. And then the blue line tells you the exact price where most of the volume happened yesterday. Does that make sense? Why that might be important there? It's like this box, green to red, was where 80% of the volume happened yesterday. The blue is where the most volume happened at yesterday. Make sense? Now, do you see in the background this kind of shaded histogram that comes way out this way? You, you see that, guys, in the background? Some of them come way out here. Notice the one that's on the blue line comes way out here. That's just showing you volume at those price levels. Like right here, see, ooh, this volume spike. Well, you can see what price level that was at. Yeah, it's the point of control. Exactly, Paul. Okay. Point of control for the day before. But that background histogram shows you where there was volume at these levels. Okay. It's not something we necessarily put rules to or trades to, but it could be helpful to look at sometimes to be like, okay, you know, I entered a trade right in here. Man, there wasn't a lot of volume right here. See that big valley? But then, ooh, right in here, there was a lot. So if my trade's getting up into that big volume area, I may want to keep, keep it tight, right? Okay. So that's ice. That's ice volume levels right there. Okay. That's what that is right there. Um, you guys seen these cyan lines all over your chart? Get a lot of these? Okay. These are called walls, all right? Or some people call them lorry levels, all right? These are levels in the market that the market respects, these walls. We do not take trades into a wall. Are you going to drive your car into a wall? Of course not, right? You want open space to drive your car. These are called walls. And there can be a lot of them, yes. But they're very important to know because you can see over and over again. I mean, just a quick glance at this chart. I mean, these were made in the past and they go forward into the future. I mean, look right here where market bounced off a wall, market popped off a wall, popped off a wall, right? Hesitated here around a wall, popped off of a wall. I got right here, popped off a wall, popped off a wall, popped off a wall. These weren't made after the fact. These were made before the fact. Right here, you see the market bounce in between the wall. All you got to do is go back and look at them, okay? These are walls, all right? So the cyan thing you see, the cyan lines you see on your chart are walls. We already talked about ice. So, again, some people call them lorry levels, the, the uh, cyan dotted lines. Now, these are historical levels 
where big moves started, okay? They're based on what we call ICRs, institutional controlled reversals, and third bar sling power trades based on some of our larger charts, okay? And these are, um, and these are updated ongoing when there's new ICRs or TBS, you know, power trades on the larger charts that Lori finds, they're added into the system, okay? But the market respects these levels often, it will pull back to these levels often, and it will push away from these levels often. We don't want to trade going into these. And Daryl talks about that in the training, explains, you know, how to use, I'm not really teaching tonight about how to use these levels necessarily, not talking tonight about trade setups, I'm helping you understand what the heck is all this stuff on your chart, okay? So the cyan levels that you see there are the walls, okay? Make sense? Does it kind of help to see these separated out a little bit? Okay, no, these are updated real time. You don't have to reload charts, Daniel. Mm -mm. Okay. Um, let's see here. Okay, so let's clarify something. Some of you are like, do y'all remember in the setup video, one of the setup videos, that Daryl had you go through and open a um, a 60 minute chart and a 240 minute chart and how do you open them in these different tabs and then just leave them there, everything will copy over flux levels and you're going what the hell is this guy talking about right raise your hand say yes how many y'all said what 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 in the world is he talking about what did i just do and why the heck did i just do it okay and he said well you know you'll understand it later okay so let's help you understand because all right, so here is a 60 minute chart, okay? What I have on here is called flux levels, flux pivot levels, okay? These are one of the things that are plotting on that 60 minute chart you opened and on that 240 minute chart you opened. And these, yes, Vincent, exactly. They, these charts have to be running in the background to plot these levels. And then they'll auto plot these levels will copy over to your trade chart. All right. You don't have to have these charts up because these levels will, you know, you have to have them, you have to have them up, but in the background or minimize it in the background. The only reason you're opening these charts is for two reasons. For one, so you can take a glance at the bigger market, right? This is an hourly chart. Do you see my screen here? This goes back three weeks. That's three weeks worth of market on one screen. Do you see how every once in a while it might be helpful to take a look at the bigger picture and say, oh, what's the bigger picture doing? We're zoomed way in on a 10 tick chart for trading, but what's the bigger market doing? What I wanna show you here, okay? So do you see these levels here, okay? You see the red levels and see the blue levels. These are called flux pivot levels. These are more larger term support, support and resistance levels and pivot levels. I mean, let's just take a quick peek. See this red level right here, okay? Do you see right here where the market bounced off of it? Do you see right here where the market bounced off of it? Do you see right here where the market bounced off of it? in that area you see back here where the market hit this several times can everybody see that and then you see back here on october the 6th it did the same thing so does that make sense why this indicator is plotting into the future saying hey be aware of this level on the big scale okay i mean do you guys understand that what we're looking at over here is right here right now 
tick by tick, price level by price level, zoomed in on order prints to this one bar, to these few little ticks. This is the super view, super zoom. Everybody get that? Our trade chart, it's the super zoom. Just like a sniper would look through a super zoom scope to get his target, right? But we also want to know and need to know as traders, what's going on in the big term? What's over the last three weeks, you know, or a few weeks, where are the big turnaround levels in the market? Does that make sense? And then when new ones are plotted where, hey, there's been something that's been hit four or five times, it will change the levels. Okay. John says, does this chart data get used by another chart or is it just for better information to look at ourselves? No, this chart data here, John, this chart, the 60 minute and the 240 minute, it's for you to take a glance at and see what the market's doing. But see these levels that it's generating? These levels are auto transferred over to your trade chart. But you have to have these charts up and running in the background for them to auto transfer. So what it's doing is it's taking these levels from the big chart and putting them like the long term chart and putting them on your smaller trade chart. So that way you're getting a, a bigger picture view. OK. Um, put onto your trade chart. Gamani says, do we have to build these charts anyway? Nope, you follow the video and it shows you how to open them right away. The templates are already made, okay? The vertical lines are the days. See, this is an hourly chart. See this? So that's the 13th, the 14th, the 15th, the 16th. Okay, Jerry, does that make sense? Those are just the, the midnight cutoffs, okay? So do you see the power of these lines here? Like, okay, look at this red line here. See how the market bounced off of it there, cuddled up on it there, bounced there, bounced there, bounced there, bounced here, bounced here, bounced here. So you see moving forward, what that might be a level you want to know is an important support resistance reversal level of the market. Do you see why you might want to have this larger term um, level on your trade chart? Because if the market's coming back up, do you want to take a trade going right into that level where you expect chop or you expect a bounce or you expect a pullback? I mean, don't you want to kind of know that's there? Because we see a lot of the little levels, but you also want to see the bigger time frame levels too. Does that make sense? And does it make sense how those big levels get copied over to your diagnostic chart for you to see? Got it? Does that make a little more sense why the heck some of this stuff is there? Because I know, look, Daryl doesn't want to spend hours and hours and hours in these training videos while you're setting up NinjaTrader. If you had to spend 10 hours to go through and set up your NinjaTrader and your charts, would you have done it? No. You'd have given up and said, forget this. I don't care if this is a free 30-day trade room. This is too much stuff. Just show me how to get the dang chart. Get me in the room, <laughs> right? And that's kind of what that training course is for. Hey, download NinjaTrader. Get the chart set up. Here's your chart. You got it in front of you. Now we'll slowly start teaching you what everything is. We're going to bring this all together for you guys, okay? Make sense? Susan says, loving this webinar. Great. Great, Susan, I'm glad. That's what this is here for, okay? So we understand, now with these flux pivot levels, you're always gonna have a few levels up and a few levels down, showing you where are the few levels, where are the few most recent support resistance reversal levels up, where are the few most that are below? We don't want it to go infinity, infinity and clog up your chart. You got enough on your dang chart, right? Just showing you the few levels above, the few levels below you need to be aware of for potential bounces. Okay, make sense? Now let's talk about, so in that video, Daryl had you open 60 minute charts, 
240 minute charts and 10 minute charts in the background, remember? And the 10 minute charts, okay, plot these yellow lines here, right? And those yellow lines get transferred over to your trade chart as well. On the 10 minute chart, okay, uh, these are called dynamic magnet levels. What it is, it's a 10 minute bar chart. And if a 10 minute bar has, like if we turned on volume here at the bottom and you see like these huge volume spikes on one bar, that gets created as a magnet with a line that drives, draws forward. It's volume magnets, letting you know, hey, on this bar at this level, there was a huge amount of volume here, okay? You know that, we know that indicators don't control the market. What we think or want doesn't control the market. What, what controls the market besides Trump tweets and crazy news? <laughs> volume and orders, right? And if looking in the past, there's a huge volume spike at a certain place, don't you want something there to tell you, hey, there was a huge volume spike at this level? Don't you see how that might be important? Because what does the market often do when it comes back to that level of huge volume? It'll stop, it'll reverse, it'll hesitate, it may chop around, right? You want to, it respects it, Susan, exactly. So if you're trying to trade this market with your real live money, it's real important for you to know there's a level coming up that the market probably is going to respect. So it's probably smart if I respect it too and protect my money, right? What do you think? Do you see up here? Here's one, here's one, here's a. Do you see this right here where it's like, man, that, that one kind of looks thick. What do you think that means? When it kind of looks thick like that. There was two of them. There was one there and then the market hit that place again, did the same thing with high, with high volume and it created another line there. When you see a stack of lines, Meaning, hey, this has happened more than once at this area. Don't you think that means it's a little bit stronger of a level, right? Or what about when you see, hey, there's a volume magnet there, there, and there. There's two or three kind of close together. Well, if the market's coming into that and there's three stacked together there, do we know which one it's gonna respect the most or the least? No, we don't. But what could we expect? Maybe some chop, range, bounce in those areas, right? Consolidation, makes sense? What about if the market came down a little further? Man, there's two volume magnets stacked right close to each other. They're not right on top, they're a few ticks apart, but do I want to take a short trade going into that? Is, that? is that smart or dumb? I'm sorry. Let me rephrase that more professionally. Would that be a possibility trade or a probability trade to trade down into that level, expecting it just to break with no problem? That's a very unwise possibility trade, not smart, right? Would you know that without a volume magnet being plotted there to tell you that? No. So do you see how helpful these are and why they're there? So let me just do a quick review because I get it. As a newbie, you're like, guys, you know, Apex seems cool. They gave me this 30 days free. I didn't have to put a credit card up. They let me in the live trade room. The trade room seems cool. Daryl's calling out trades. Lori, everybody's nice here. You know, th this is cool. But guys, these charts are too much. 
How many of you thought that? Just raise your hand. Like, guys, these charts are too much. There's too much crap on this chart. How am I ever going to learn this line and that line and this level? And oh, my goodness. Right? In the beginning, you kind of feel that way. I did too years ago. But when you really start to understand what each one is and separate them out and understand why they're there, you start to appreciate them. Okay? Like, I remember years ago when Lori was trying to get me to put more levels on your chart and do the. I was like, this is a pain. Like, this is just too much. Like, I, I don't want it. It was, it was like a hassle. It was like a chore. But then when you really understand what they are and how they protect you, you're like, oh, geez, I need these. You know what I mean? It's not just some rule. It's not just a bother. It, it's like your kids. When you yell at them, right? Don't be riding your bike in the street. Don't be running out in the street. Don't go out and play in the street. And they just think, oh, there's mom and dad and their crazy rules. They're just being mean old parents, and I hate their rules. They just like to put rules on me to be mean. Until you sit them down and explain to them why, and you show them a YouTube video of somebody getting ran over and hurt and what can really happen, and, and then it's like, oh, right. You know what I mean? Then it's not. It kind of sticks with them and they understand why. But each one of these levels that we've talked about, do you notice that they're not all support resistance levels just in 10 different colors? They're all looking at something different. These levels here, they're looking at a 10 minute time frame chart looking for an extremely tall volume spike and putting a line there for you. Right? These are looking at 60 minute and 240 minute time frames looking for a reversal bounce spot that's been hit multiple times over and over and over and over and over again on a big picture long term chart so one is showing you a volume spike the other one's showing you turnaround points on the big time frame right so they're showing you two different things there and and two different reasons behind having that there it's not just the same thing over and over right Okay, and then from there, what are we looking at? Well, then we have something else. Um, where, where did that other chart go? I got too many charts I'm showing you guys here. I don't know where I'm going now. And then we have our deviation levels, right? That were showing us the forward expectation of the market based on the pricing of options, right? So it's looking at something completely different altogether from those, okay? Then we've got ice levels that was showing the 80% of yesterday's volume area, right? So we got this one showing 80% of yesterday's volume areas, the ice levels. We got these levels showing us the, the expectation of the next day based on the pricing of options and those levels. Then we've got the wall levels that are super powerful walls that the market normally pushes off of based on you know, past big moves of the market. And then we've got you know, the flux levels, the dynamic levels, and so on. So do you understand how there's all these different levels, but they're each looking at something different, right? They're each looking at something different. So it's giving you different views of the market. Okay, so you, can you see how that's important to have all those different views of the market? Like these are important levels for different reasons. 
And then Thursday, we'll bring into play some of the levels that are plotted by order prints, okay? So you understand why each one of those was important on its own, yes? Can everybody understand that? Not hard, okay? So let's just kind of take the next logical step. You, you understand why each of those is very important and why the market would respect each one of those do you understand why each one of those on their own is worth knowing? And each one of those on their own, there's a reason the market would respect it. And each one of those levels on their own, there's a reason the market might react there. Does everybody understand that? That even on their own individually, there's a big reason why they're there and you should be aware the market will respect it. Yes? then do you think now that you understand that now let's go back to the whole my god that chart is cluttered oh god there's too much on your chart well i want to look at something here i want to show you you just all said you agreed and you understood why one was important on its own do you see right here, what is that cyan line right there? Settlement. And we're going to talk about this more later. What is right underneath it in white? You can barely see it. It's a order prints mini magnet that we're going to talk about Thursday. The reason you can barely see it is because right on top of it is an orange order, pin, order prints paw print. Right above settlement is a white mini magnet. So if you can understand why each one of those levels individually, separately on their own was very important and the market could respect it, do you see how powerful it is when you've got a stack of four of them, four different things, four different type of levels, one that's looking at volume, one that's looking at a support resistance, one that's looking at future, when they're all stacked up together in the same place, multiple ones, do you see how powerful that is? And just be, even in this random example I showed you here, what happened when the market came up and hit it? Boom. Right. So do you understand why there's no way on God's earth that you would want to take a trade going into that? Going into that. Do you see that? that some of this may seem very, very elementary to you or the way I'm explaining it, or you might be like, geez, John, we got it, just move on. But do you get it? Does this make a lot more sense for those of you especially that are brand new in open house? Why this is there? Yeah, exactly, Vincent. And with naked charts, just with random five minute bars, you wouldn't know any of this, right? You wouldn't, you, meaning you wouldn't see any of this. You wouldn't be able to know these levels are there. It's like a magnifying glass. It, it's like, I always say it, it's like you're driving down the highway at 70 miles an hour blindfolded because you have no idea what the heck's in front of you, right? Okay, so does everybody understand this little scenario here? I'm gonna repeat myself one more time. Each one of these levels is made by something different on their own they're each powerful but when there's a stack of them like that it's a, like a super super wall right everybody get that yes so now i want to show you something everybody remember this right here okay so what i'm i really want to make this clear to you 
So everybody sees what I'm talking about, right? This stack of multiple things right there. Yes? Clear? So now I want to go back to right here. And I want to go back to this easy cheesy chart. Okay. Um, or now, you know what? We'll just use the same chart. So, do you remember when I said, okay, the market's right here? Let's just say this bar closed up, meaning if the market came up to here, that would be an up closed bar, right? Let's just say this was going to be a potential trade setup. Let's, let's just say. Meaning I would want to enter right here, right? I'd want to enter right here. And my take profit would be, well, crap, it moved on us. Okay. I want to enter right here. My take profit is going to be right there. So y'all remember we, us talking about that, right? How this shows us where we would enter if, if we were going up. And that shows us where we would exit. So we get to see enter versus exit. What is in my way? If right here in the middle between your entry and between your profit was that big old stack that we just marked right there. If you saw that between that entry point and that take profit point. Does that make perfect sense? Is that a light bulb aha moment for anybody? Of, oh, okay, now I got it. What you're saying is if my entry is right here and then my target to take profit is up here, that means I got to get through that brick freaking wall to get to my profit. And it's, is that possible for that to happen? Sure, it's possible. Is it probable? Right. It's possible, but it's not probable. And we don't do possible trades. We do probable trades. And we stack all the odds in our favor. So does that now make a little more sense? Why having this one and this one and this one? Oh, God, why is all that clutter on the chart? Oh, that's annoying. Is it? Or do you now see it as a tool of, oh, that's my get on and get off. And what's in my way between point A and B? Is there a stack of levels in my way? There is. I don't want to take it. There isn't. It's wide open. Meets the rules. Go for it. Yeah. See, Craig says, yeah, but now it's not really annoying anymore. Okay. It's there for a reason. I get it. Okay. Coming together a little bit. And 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 we're gonna go through more. And like I said, Thursday we're gonna dig in a little deeper. Um somebody said, hey, what about the purple zone? That purple zone is see, there's there's a whole other set of levels we haven't addressed tonight, because we're gonna address them Thursday night, because everything I'm showing you today, none of none of what I'm showing you today is about order prints the order flow, the order prints in the background that creates other levels to look at, okay? So it's all these kind of hidden levels in the background that you would never know <laughs> just with a basic chart. And what we're doing is wanting to see all these different levels, but we're not necessarily worried about every single on its own level as we are like right here. This is a live chart. If any of you are trading short right now on ES, look left. What do you see right in here? Well, 
This purple thing is called a ZOI. We're going to talk about this on Thursday. But also inside of that purple thing is that orange line called a paw print, meaning there was a weak price level there. Over here, it looks like we've got another ZOI, maybe a block order at the same area. Right here, we have a yellow cluster. And right here, we're at a half deviation level. Do you think that all those things combine, and some of those things we didn't talk about tonight, because we're going to talk about them Thursday, is that a eh, little speed bump in the road, nothing to worry about? Or do you say that's a brick wall more Probably. Could the market blow right through it? Absolutely. But what's probable? Right. So if you were in a short trade down and the market got right here to it, should you leave your stop way up here to let the market come way back against you? Or should you be tightened up and protecting your money? Yeah. But if you're using some random five minute chart with an EMA, are you going to see any of this? Like you have no vision, no true vision of the market without these levels. And then you stack them all together and you see where the heck they, they, they stack up. And you know, that's my end zone. That's, I don't want to go there. Right? What's that old Lion King movie where he's holding up Simba? Oh, what's over there? We don't go there. Right? You don't go there. You don't trade there. You don't trade into that. Now, a trade off of that level might be great, right? A perfect setup off of a stacked concrete wall, like, like, a, like a swimmer pushing off the wall on one side, right? Okay. Um, Bert says, where and when can we obtain this recorded session? Bert, all you got to do is send $19.99 to my home address. I'm kidding. Um, I will have this webinar up later tonight, worst case tomorrow morning. Um, I'll get it posted out on the Facebook group um, tonight, but right here, if you go to... Go back to the sniper training page, okay? Um, if you scroll down here to the bottom, section eight webinars, it will be put um, right here under webinar recordings, most recent webinars. See that every, every week we do a new webinar, The next by the next morning it's right there under most recent webinars, okay? Yeah, and it'll be on the Apex YouTube channel. I'll put it on the Facebook page. Okay. So we will get it uh we will get it posted. Okay. So um guys, we've been going for about an hour and fifteen. Have I overwhelmed you? You had enough? Do you want me to go over a couple of more or do you want to digest this and we'll get into part two on uh Thursday? more okay i'm gonna give you two more things we're gonna save order prints for thursday okay um yeah some of you are saying more 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 some of you're saying ah i might have to cut it short if you gotta go totally understand just check out the recording tomorrow and fast forward to the end or or go back through this guys but tomorrow for those of you that need to hop off for tomorrow when you're looking at these charts Stop feeling so overwhelmed. Stop having to look at every single on its own. Like, what is this? What is this? What is it? Remember, these levels are there for a reason. I want to worry about just quick quiz. Am I worried so much just about this one little thing right here on its own? Well, certain ones, yes. Like walls, hey, that's enough. Okay. And there, in the trade setups, Daryl goes through the rules. Okay, for this trade, don't take it if there's this in the way or two of these in the way or a stack of this in the way. Okay, but the biggest thing is, are you so much worried about one individual level or one individual level? Boom, what is this? I see three things stacked there. Red flag. Make sense? 
okay? Focus on those especially, all right? Oh, hi, Andrew, very, very welcome, absolutely, okay? Um, okay, let's go over, give me one second here. I wanna go over two other quick things on the chart, okay? Down here at the bottom, okay, you've got this red and green, right? Um, this is what we call DR, that stands for uh, deviation reversals, okay? It's the DR indicator. And basically what this is, you know, I talked to you about the um, deviation levels that are, you know, uh, the volatility price and, uh, you know, options for the next day. The, the deviation levels are like a daily level. This deviation uh, reversal indicator is more like an intraday deviation. And, and basically, you know, when, when the DR gets up here and see these two yellow lines over here, it's kind of shows like when the DR gets way up into those lines, it's kind of hit more like an intraday deviation. And sometimes when it gets way high, that can be time for a little bit of a pullback. But we mainly use it for also helping us in, you know, direction of our trades. Okay, if you've watched some of the videos for the TX trades, for example, we're only taking trades in the direction of or the color of this indicator. Okay. Um, and yes, it, it it's very short term. Okay. And so there's only, there's a couple of trades where we can trade against the color of the DR and you just have to go through the trades to see, you know, and learn those. But the deviation reversal is based more on smaller time frame, you know, intraday moves of the market. Okay. Um, let me give you a quick example of something. Just look at this chart right here. When you see big red, green, you know, red, green, red, green, red, green, red, green, red. What do you think the market's doing? Is it super trending? Probably ranging up, down, up, down. Might mean chop, but could also mean range. Does that make sense? Where it's hit and intraday, hit and intraday, hit and intraday, up, down, up, down, red, green, red, green. Okay, compared to um, here, red, 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 see the difference there? It's another way we kind of use it too. When you see it flipping red, green, red, green, red, green, and we're chopping or we're ranging, right? Okay, so that's the DR or deviation reversal indicator. For example, in the trade, you know, our, our TX trade, Daryl says over and over again, we only trade in the direction of the DR. We only trade in the direction of DR. So if this thing is red, are we looking for up trades? Are we looking for long trades? Are we looking to buy? Are we only looking for short trades that, you know, might have what? An exhaustion box and trapped orders? An exhaustion box and trapped orders, right? We're only looking for short trades, okay? So that's the DR indicator, that's what that is. That makes sense, okay? Nothing to get too crazy about, it's just, that's what it's there for. It's like, okay, got it. DR indicator. Now, there are certain trades where we can go against the color of the DR, but for the most part, our D, uh, uh, trapped Xbox trades, you're only, if it doesn't match the color of the DR, don't take it. It's not real hard. Okay. Um, let's see here. We might have time to cover this one. Um, no, I don't want that one on there. Hold on. Give me a second. Um... You guys losing steam? You want to end with that? You want to end with the DR? That give you enough to kind of think about? Let, let's go ahead and stop there because there's one more I, would, I did want to talk to you about. Um, 
the oscillation detectors and some of the divergence indicators. But I wanna save that to where I can really dig into divergence with you. I wanna really help you understand what divergence is and how to use it. Um, and, you know, I didn't use most of these slides here. I, I like to have slides to be able to show you. Sometimes I think it's better just to pull up the dang chart and show you, right? Like sometimes it's easier to not look at a boring slide, but like, let's pull up the chart. And do you see this here? Does this make sense, you know? Um, so guys, we're gonna stop it there because I'm gonna have to take some good time with you to help you understand divergence. But we're gonna bring this chart together for you, okay? Um, we did this tonight. I'm gonna also run the webinar. Daryl was, uh, was gonna cover tonight, but um, as you know, he's been, been a little sick, been going to the doctor, dealing with his earache and headaches. He's been such a trooper though, still hopping in the trade room with you guys every morning, like in excruciating pain. Like he's in there trading and talking to you guys and he'll text me like, dude, I gotta freaking go. I, I, I'm in so much pain, <laughs> but he's really trying and um, really trying. So he was gonna cover the night, but I took it. I'm gonna also do Thursday nights, okay? To, um, to really dig into order print levels. And we're gonna just keep going, guys. We're gonna do at least two of these webinars a week. If y'all want more, Tell me, I'll do another one, okay? I'll do another one, we'll dig in, really help you understand these charts, and we're gonna make the most out of your free 30 days here. We're gonna help you know everything you can and really, really get it down, okay? Uh, Facebook.com slash Apex Investing, okay? Um, follow us on Twitter, follow us on Facebook. Uh, the thing about Facebook is it's not about, oh, we gotta get a bunch of likes and posts. We do a lot of stuff on our Facebook group, okay? And we'll post news there, we'll post information there, we'll post webinar stuff there, we'll post webinar recording, we'll post trade results, we'll post like, hey, news to be aware of tomorrow. It's a great way to stay connected of, of what's going on, okay? So, um, yeah, Matt, I've actually been in the room the last couple of days because I wasn't sure if Daryl was gonna make it, <laughs> but he did make it. So I let him cover the room and I was handling some stuff in the back end. But uh, guys, thank you. I appreciate all the kind words. I really hope this was helpful to kind of, I wanna take the scary out of it. I wanna take the overwhelming and confusing out of it because I, I remember what it was like being new. I remember what it's like having all these dang lines on the chart and going, guys, come on, you know? We're gonna break it down and make it easy. and You're gonna understand it. We're gonna keep rocking and rolling here. So follow us on Facebook, check out the recording of this video, be in the Elite Trade Room tomorrow. Also make sure, make sure, let me just show you one last time here. Thursday night, we're gonna keep going with this, part two. So what you wanna do is hop over here to the Sniper Trading page. The very, very first thing, register for upcoming webinars. Here's the one we're on right now, boom, Thursday, right there, go register, okay? Register for it, I'll see you then and we'll keep rolling through these charts. All right guys, thank you so much, have a great evening. Make sure to watch the courses, get your charts set up, learn as much as you can. If you have any questions or need help with setting up your Ninja Trader, okay? The quickest, best way, watch the videos. If you have trouble, rewatch the videos. If you have an issue, right here. Go to the Skype room, they're right on and they can help you, okay? They can help you right away. I mean, it's, I mean, let me just pull this over. You see the Skype room right here, NTH support room, 83 people in there. Even as of tonight, even as of tonight, Daryl's sick, right here, 925 is in there telling people what to do helping people. People will help you in this room, get your questions answered. You post a picture saying, hey, I have a problem here. Boom, here's what you do. Oh, great advice. Ask in that room, get quick help. We are here to help around the clock, okay? All right, guys, we will see y'all tomorrow. Have a great night. Thank you very much. Michael, I appreciate that. Thank you so much for your kind words, guys. I'm glad, uh, I'm glad y'all enjoyed this. Um, I'll get a lot of Daryl in some of the training and some of the room and I approach things from a little bit different view, a little bit different teaching style and sometimes it's a good thing for us to mix it all up. All right, guys, thank you. Have a great night. Talk to you soon.
hey guys actually do me a favor if y'all really liked this webinar hop in a skype room hop in the elite trade room tonight tomorrow morning hop on the facebook group say something about it like oh the webinar was great i loved it so much man it was eye opener it really helped share the words we've got a lot of people in this open house not everybody was able to make it on the webinar so if y'all can post it out there that it really helped you if you liked it or say hey it was terrible i hated it whatever say whatever you want to say but help other people that weren't on here to watch the recording so please encourage that on facebook skype room and especially tomorrow morning in the elite trade room so these other guys that missed this these other new people in open house help us encourage them to watch this recording i want them all to really know what's going on okay so can you do me that favor can you hop on and do that for me i'd really appreciate it thank you very very much all righty bye-bye